I Dish Nation, the man in the studio that sits in front of you right now, man, you remember him looking way different on TV <laughs> on Everybody Hates Chris, but now he on Chrome, he got a mustache, he, oh. he, he rocking a curl now, and you know he about to have... How long it took me to get this? How long did it take you to grow the mustache? This is literally my entire life. And his voice oh. got deep. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Hyland James Williams! Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Nothing complaints. And, you know, because, like, a lot of times, especially, like, in Hollywood, mm -hmm. child actors have a hard time making that yeah. transition from something that we loved, seeing you do as a kid, right. to, like, you know, doing as an adult. And you have one of the most talked-about movies in film festivals right now, Dear White People. Yes. Dear White People, the minimum requirement of black friends needed to not seem racist has just been raised to two. Sorry, but your weed man, Tyrone, does not count. Dear white people, please stop touching my hair. Does this look like a petting zoo to you? Mistress in, dating a black person to piss off your parents is a form of racism. Now, can you tell us in your own words, what the movie's about. Uh, Dear White People is about uh, four black college students in an Ivy League school um, who are dealing with identity issues of what does it mean to be black in 2014. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dealing with this, like, new situation in America where we've never been before. Like, there's a black president, and uh, there's a lot of conversation about, is race still an issue? And of course it's still an issue, but in what ways, you know, and what different shapes of, like, identity are there? And it's it's talking a lot about that. Are you, like, a student on campus or what? Yes, Lionel is a, uh, he's a sophomore uh, on campus who has yet to really find his voice, and he's one of these guys who doesn't like labels, who doesn't want to be specifically any one thing. So he spends most of the film, you know, we are the eyes through which, you know, he, we see everybody in the film, and he's just formulating opinions. He has a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas of who he would like to be, but not quite sure of who he is now, as a lot of people go through in college. Word. Do you realize that there hasn't been a character named Lionel on TV or the movie since the freaking Jeffersons? <laughs> That's probably accurate. The closest we got was that Lion O on Lion O. <laughs> Thundercats. Um, yeah, Thundercats. Yeah. <laughs> that is accurate. Wow. Is there, are there a lot of Lionels out there? Is that why we're not doing that? Nah, it's like, you know, like sometimes names get retired for short periods of time. Like, you know, like Hitler, no one uses that last name anymore. But I don't Ly see why. I, Lionel, I, I know right. there's a Lionel Hampton. There's a Lionel Hampton. Yeah, he's a, ooh, an older guy. Yeah, that's the thing. Everybody, like, with the name Lionel is at least over 40, I want to say. Yeah. At least I don't see, like, no 18-month-old Lionels out there right now. <laughs> now, in addition to this movie, um, you've also, like, you know, like, dibble dabbled in music a little bit, too. A little bit. Are you, you, you quit? No. Okay. I didn't quit. But my thing is, with anything creative, I want to be able to give 100% to it. You know, with each thing. You know, that's why you don't necessarily see me out here in like, you know, six or seven different projects at one time. Because for me, I don't feel like I can do all of those things properly, you know, and, and be juggling all that. So for me, I haven't doubled back around musically yet. I've been playing with it, but at some point, I'm going to dedicate the time when I have some time to do it. I think about like, I want to take three to six months to do it right. Word. Now, there's an internet conspiracy theory oh, going no. on right now. A lot of people. <laughs> want to prove that you are not Orlando Jones <laughs> and, that, and that you're thing. also not Solange. His <laughs> illegitimate stepchild? Yeah. Um, no. I am not the biological child of Orlando. I am not Solange. I don't fight that well. Um... That's just not me. That's okay, I was not I, elevated I would be with Jay. Sister. I would be your sister if that's the case. Is that, was, yeah, is that I what the case is? I always get Solange. You get Solange? Yes, mm. all the time. It's so interesting <laughs> that like that's how her name gets brought up. It's like, no, you look like Solange. You look <laughs> and it's like, I, I, I would assume she's offended. Right. Because right. it's mostly guys. Right. right. I would assume she's very offended by that. Right. I'm so sorry. Right. Now, thinking back on your your, uh, your previous show, Everybody Hates Chris, mm -hmm. like, it seems like you guys had such a tight camaraderie. Like, y'all look like a real family up there. Like, are y'all still, still keep in touch? We do. We do still keep in touch. It's a lot like, you know, whenever you've had a moment in time, any special moment of time with a group of people, there's a certain... There's a certain feeling you get when you're around those people. So it's like when we're, we're all out working, like Tashina's down here now doing Survivor's Remorse and Terry's everywhere with his shirt off. When we see each other, it's like family. You know, it's like we have you know, these moments that click. And even like online of 
I just reconnected with Tashina online. I just we weren't following each other on stuff and had no idea why. And then we just like we have to sit down and talk. And you know we're family with each other, and that's what's great. But the good thing is we're all busy, so we can't see each other a lot, which Word. is great. Now. And in, in the TV show, everybody hates Chris. It seems like you always had something going on with a girl. Now, mm-hmm. out of all those girls who played your girlfriend or a girl you was interested on the show, was there ever one you had a crush on in real life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I mean, that was I was like 14. It was every single one that came through. <laughs> You know, the writer's room of who y'all bringing in next? Who is this? Let me see a headshot. Let me see. Okay, yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. Let's keep that one around for a while. And then as soon as I tried to get at them and they rejected me, it was like, you know what? I think we need to bring in a new one. I think now's that time. Now's the time to just bring in a new girl. Now, what are some things you wish white people knew about black people that they don't? Hmm. Okay. One thing that me and, like, my friends talk about, I don't necessarily come from, I guess you would call it the typical black experience. I feel like... With us, we have to address the fact that in our everyday lives that there's like, you know, the stereotypical super racist kind of white person. And then there's like that, just the cool. Everybody's just cool. Everything's Mm -hmm. cool. I feel like the same thing needs to happen with us. Not all of us are super kind of this, this, I guess, hip hop stereotype of, you know, what's what's portrayed like, you know, kind of is brought up in the film. I don't just listen to, you know, hip hop. I am into, you know, Robert Altman movies and I do appreciate Mumford and Sons and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff. Like, we're not all one thing. Right. Like, we're different. There is diversity. You know, we don't all come from the same experiences. And I think that's one thing that I don't, like, you know, especially portrayed in the media and all that, that we all have to be this one kind of thing. And it just sets up stereotypes and, you know, it's when people get hurt. So what do you think about what Raven Simone said about not wanting to be identified as an African-American? I don't know why everybody freaked out about that. I really don't get it. Because when I when I think about, you know, who who am I, one of the, I mean, it's not the top of my list do I go black. You know, obviously, yes, that's who I am. These are my people and, you know, this is my heritage. But who I am as a person doesn't necessarily boil down to, you know, what my genetic makeup is. I think everybody thought that she was trying to say that she just, like, wasn't black or didn't want to be or didn't want to be a... So I don't think that's what she was saying. I think she was just saying that I am an individual outside of what came together to make me me genetically. Right. Right. I think that it's really great that this film is bringing that to the conversation because, you know, everybody's giving people like Iggy Azalea a hard time because she raps a certain way, but she happens to be Austria. Yeah. You know, Austri- it's kind of like it doesn't have a face. We're a melting pot. And it just depends on what type of culture you decide to gravitate towards exactly. at this point. I think, you know, I think we, in a lot of ways, felt that we had to kind of hold on with this like vice grip to our culture and our community so that we would not be, you know, broken down. And it was a coping mechanism for a lot of things that were happening that were difficult. However, you know, we're now seeing people appreciate that culture and our first reaction can't be to shun them from it. Right. But it's a weird fine line because sometimes like our culture is appreciated, but it does get cannibalized at times. You know, like, mm. you know, the same way, like, you know, like how we like really made a lot of great efforts and strides in jazz and we mm. eventually kind of lost jazz as being like, you know, like, you know, the strivers in it. And yeah. it, you're starting to slowly see it happen in hip hop in a really weird way. It's going to take another maybe 15, 20 years before it gets there. But, you know, hey, remember when black people used to rap? Yeah. But do, <laughs> yeah. You, but do we rap. need, do we need one specific thing to be our thing. You know, when you look at all other genres of music, you don't necessarily say that is a white genre of music. It's just a genre of music. Mm -hmm. Do we need one specific thing? Obviously, yes, with certain things. I don't know if it's we've been better at it because we've this is all we've kind of really done and nobody else has tried to bridge into it yet. And I think we're starting to see this, like, Mm -hmm. this crossover of, like, I know a lot of people had a big issue with Macklemore. I didn't have that big issue with it because I thought he was talking about something different. We weren't hearing the same things that we're hearing. And we need diversity in the genre. Mm -hmm. I think it gets scary, though, when something is a moneymaker for a certain group of people and then all of a sudden the money's not there anymore and you're seeing other people profit. So it's almost a fear factor to where, like, okay, cool, what can we create and generate, you know, just to kind to keep everything mm-hmm. fresh and new. Right. I mean, it's it, it, man, it's a great discussion. It's a great it dialogue. Is. There is no right answer. And I think hip-hop is becoming, you know, pop music, just popular music now. You have these stations, you know, that are playing hip-hop records. Like, I was listening to, and it was like back-to-back. I heard 
uh, Taylor Swift's new song, and then like no mediocre right, right after it. <laughs> I was like, is this ha- is this like the world we live in now, yeah. where it's just like people are just the fact that it makes them feel good and it's good music, and I think that's ultimately what pushes us in the right direction. Well, um, in addition to this movie, uh, Dear White People, I am also a self-proclaimed geek, and I was excited to find out that you were gonna be on Walking Dead. Yes. For this brand new season. What? Now, every time a black person walks on Walking Dead, a black person <laughs> that was there before that black person Ed. dies yeah. on Walking Ed. Dead. Ed. So, <laughs> so who has to die in order for you to be there, or is your appearance on the show a cameo? Oh, I am that a myth. <laughs> um, I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you this. They have me on one of those contracts of like, if you say anything, okay. we will sue you for what we think the show will make, which is kind of weird. It's just like this whole <laughs> thing of like what we project it to be, right. you'll be sued for. But um, I will say this, you know, I've been really blessed to do this and to be a part of a project where the role that I'm portraying was not written black. Got you. And they have their casting has done really good of just hiring the best man for the job, which is something that so many black actors in Hollywood have been fighting for for years. Uh, you know, Scott Gimple, I mean, he's, that's what he said to me and you know several other people of like, I don't write ethnicity unless it's like specifically has to be that or like mm-hmm. something from the comic where somebody's a specific ethnicity or whatever. But you've seen, you know, crossovers with that that weren't the case either. Um, I like to believe it's a coincidence because, you know, people are just dying left and right. And, you know, but it's black hiring people. The, Everybody's gonna eventually die. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, eventually in this show, it's, that's mm-hmm. the way you know it's it's got to end. But um, I'm really proud to be a part of a project that will see something outside of the ethnicity. There's so many things I've wanted to read for, fought to read for. That people are like, no, we just want to go this one way. But and we can't. We can't honestly say that you're not gonna play a zombie in the show, and you haven't been on 17 episodes already. And you've just <laughs> been there in makeup the entire time. I've right? been there as a zombie <laughs> the entire time. I've been here. I've been in Atlanta for. Uh, almost six months. Oh, so if that tells you, you anything, you could be around for a minute. If that mm-hmm. tells you Hopefully. anything, there you go. <laughs> so I know recently you had a birthday, October 9th. I did have a yeah. birthday. Yeah. birthday, big dog. That might have had something to do with the thickness of the mustache. Did it? Coming is that on what it is? That's what it is. Great. Getting older. Great. So what did you wish for on your birthday? Oh God. <laughs> the big wish? piece of chicken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, what did I wish for on my birthday? Oh. For everything to do well. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. what, eight days after my birthday, Dear White People comes out, and The mm-hmm. Walking Dead premiered, like, a few days after it, and just for everything to do well. There's so many things going on this fall. It's like a blessing, but just mm-hmm. hopefully that everybody sees it and enjoys it and things go well. So, Tyler, I heard a rumor that you and Tessa Thompson may be having an affair. When, when did you hear? Oh, yeah, you have all the... The mess. <laughs> you do have all of that. I should have known. I should have noticed that. Um, no. <laughs> No, I love Tessa. Tessa is somebody I've wanted to work with forever, and you know we're we're really close and we're good friends. But no, absolutely not. Yo, I just pulled her up. Why are you Why are you not having an affair with Tessa? <laughs> because you can't. Once you do that, that's it. Like you, you can't go back. I want to work with Tessa for the rest of my life. You can. No, you can't. Look at look at everybody. <laughs> no, right you now. can. Work. Everybody's breaking not, up right now. Look yeah. at this. Exactly. Everybody's not breaking up and they hate everybody. each other and they're talking about each other. Wiz and Amber are talking about each other back and forth. Uh, I don't yeah. want to be that. And you shouldn't put it out there. If you date somebody, yeah. don't tell nobody. No, don't tell. Nobody needs to know. That's if they right. figure it out, whatever. But nobody needs to know. But I can officially confirm nothing. Yeah, Tessa's Tessa just. Okay. She's just great. I just followed Tessa Thompson. <laughs> Follow Tessa. Oh, Tessa's a beautiful girl. I did. Like, and she's brilliant. Oh, yeah. She is brilliant, especially in this. Oh, man, and she's on Twitter. All right, cool. Well, there you go. Well, yo, man, we wish you continued success. The brand new movie, Dear White People, um, is limited release right now. Limited release on the 17th and wide release on the 24th. All right, man, yo, we continue to support you yeah, and everything you, you do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, his mustache is in full effect oh, right now. I'm trying to get a beard. Right, I'm working right, on a beard. Yeah. I'm thinking real hard. I'm thinking beard-like thoughts. They're doing, they're doing lace front beards now. Have you seen See, that? Yeah. But if I do that, I'm all over media takeout of, like, look at this. I just have to work on it, and maybe maybe I'll just shave yours and then glue. <laughs> Holy sm- As you sit right here with that tiny mustache, you know what I'm seeing? What? You look like Eddie Murphy. Right when he started to blow up, like you know, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, do, do you ever, do you ever get that? I get that quite a bit, especially because not many people know, but when I did Chris, most of my studying was Delirious and Raw um, of Eddie's. Can we hear so the like Eddie a Murphy lot laugh? Of my, I, I can't do the laugh. That's the one thing. Like my actually, my college <laughs> I audition, see it. 
was his whole bit from Delirious at the barbecue of playing like five different people mm -hmm. when I was auditioning for colleges, you know, for drama school. So I can do all of everything but the laugh. It's so specific, and I hate doing a like a bad version bit. of it. <laughs> like I'm, I would like to get it down first. I'm working. I've been working on it for years, and when I do, I will come back and I'll do it. And I refuse to do anything, Eddie, that is not on point. Okay, gotcha. refuse to. <laughs> so I will be back. <laughs> It's not, it it's not on video? It's not on video? No, it was my college audition. You know, they, oh. have, they have you do this whole thing, like, you know, a theater piece or whatever. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do... Because it's like people really appreciate it. They were, he did a whole interview about it talking about how, oh, in Dreamgirls is when you did your best work, that one look before you did the drugs. Like, mm -hmm. did you not see the movie when I was everybody <laughs> at the table? Did you yeah. not see that? People don't give him credit right. for that. People do not give Eddie credit for the fact that he was everybody at the table and each character was hilarious. People have a tendency to devalue comedy. They do. Because you're laughing at it. Well, I mean, I'm seeing that now. Of, like, everyone's seeing some stuff. And even with, like, you know, Dear White People where it gets a bit more dramatic and then stuff, you know, that we've been doing with The Walking Dead of getting a different type of appreciation of, like, oh, we didn't know you could do that. You know, I'm, I'm an actor. I, was, I should be able to do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the case. But, you know, hopefully eventually people will, you know, address comedy for what it is. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Tyler James Williams, yes. oh. Dear White People in Theater. Like what you saw? Was you feeling the vibe? Click on that box on the low and subscribe.